pop on YouTube. It's your boy Tenth in uh back with another reaction video. It's the nightmare. We got three really disturbing truths. <laughs> Snowstorm uh horror stories and uh without further ado, let's get to it. I already know a lot of stuff stuff gonna happen. A lot of people are looking to break their bad habits with a new year's resolution that probably won't last long. Right. There's a more efficient way to break your bad habits. Gonna be 2024, y'all. Soon. Sponsor. <laughs> Not everything in a bad habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? Noom is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Noom is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Noom uses flavored air. And instead of harmful chemicals, Noom uses all natural, delicious flavors. It's a habit you're free to enjoy. It makes replacing your bad habit easy. It fills the void in a natural, guilt-free way. Your fume comes with an adjustable airflow dial and is designed with movable parts Wait, and magnets for fidgeting, giving <laughs> your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for de-stressing while breaking your habit. There's tons of flavors, and crisp mint is my favorite so far, and orange vanilla is a close second. The look and feel of the real wood and the shape makes you feel like you're really holding a quality piece. Stopping a bad habit is something we all put off because it's hard, but right. switching to fume is easy, enjoyable, and even fun. Noom has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. There's no reason that can't be you. That's what's up. Head to tryfume.com slash nightmare or scan the QR code and use code nightmare to get 10% off when you get the journey pack today. Go to the, go to the disc. Story one. Let's get to it. A lot of stuff stuff. I own have three to... pieces of real estate, two right. of which I rent out on Airbnb. The third property is my house in Montreal where I live. Where this story took place was my rental property in Wakefield, Quebec. It's a lot of snow. It's a comfy small home in the woods that's advertised as such. It's a two bedroom, but since it's a small house, it's geared more towards couples. Right. Sometimes I'll have groups of four or more staying there. Those are the groups I usually worry about because they're the ones who could do damage. Mm -hmm. With the couples, they usually clean up pretty well after themselves. I trust the cleaning lady to go take care of the place afterwards. After a bigger group stay, I usually take the drive over there myself to clean and make sure nothing was damaged or stolen. Right. It's only about two hours, and when I do decide to take the drive there, I'll most often stay the night there anyway. A lot of snow. This was after a bigger group stayed for a weekend, so I wanted to go up there and just clean and check on the place. I let my nearest neighbor know I was heading up there for the day. Like me, he's also hardly ever there. So when I do go up there, I reach out to him to see if there's anything he wants me to bring around back, like his mail or packages. He texted back pretty quickly that he won't be up there this week, and he'd appreciate it if I could check if there's mail from a specific person. So on my way to his house, I pulled up his driveway to his mailbox. As I walked over to it, I saw footprints in the snow alongside the house. Before investigating that, I checked his mailbox, and there were just a few junky-looking envelopes, like credit card offers. Right. I told him there's no mail from the person he mentioned, and then I let him know that someone had walked on his property. It wasn't the mailman, because the footsteps came from the woods, approached the window, and then walked around to the back. He called me, and he told me to check where the footprints led to. I followed them all around the house, take and then they led off into the woods on the other side of the house. Oh, no. He said, as long as they didn't break in, I don't give a shit. So I left and drove the remaining minute up the hill to my house. The second I got out of the car, I noticed a bunch of footprints in the snow around the property. The guests left a couple days ago, and it had snowed there the day before I arrived, so it was a little interesting that their footprints didn't fill in yet. Right. There was more snow coming tonight, so they'd surely be filled by tomorrow. The first thing I did was change the security lock on the front door for the next visitors. Right. Walking into the house it was kind of a mess. They left the sink full of dishes and glasses, the garbage bin was full, cans of pop and beer were everywhere. Damn. Some guests are like this because they figure, hey, we're paying a cleaning fee anyway. I triple checked everything to make sure nothing was taken or missing, and then I began cleaning. I had music playing as I cleaned, but even over the music, I heard something from outside. My house is all the way up on a hill surrounded by woods. Mm. No one should ever be here. I turned off the radio, and I heard yeah. footsteps in the snow right outside the house. They just passed a window now going to the backyard. I went to make sure I locked the front door, and then I didn't make any noise. Whoever was out there had to know I was here because my car was out front. Mm -hmm. After like 20 minutes of sitting in the living room, I decided to get up and go outside to look around. 
Sure enough, there was a fresh trail of footprints circling the house. I followed them all around the house, and then they seemed to just stop or overlap in the back of the house. Hold on. Right. Hold on. You keep looking, keep finding around. I'm going to come back and bite you right in your ass, nigga. Hey, man. If you're going to check some shit out, man, I check some shit out with at least a weapon. I got to be armed. I have. I got to have some with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you say your house is on top of a hill and no, and by the woods and nobody should be there, but yet footprints and all that stuff like that. Window air conditioning unit. I looked out to the woods feeling like someone was just out there watching. They so went back inside and didn't go outside again that day. Right. I ordered a lot of food on Grubhub that took forever to be delivered, <laughs> which ended up being my late lunch and dinner. How I spent the rest of my day after cleaning and doing the laundry was just working remotely on my laptop. It was snowing again outside. It was supposed to snow all night, meaning I definitely have some people looking to rent the next few days for the cozy factor. That's Thanks, usually man. how it goes. Money. After I was done with work, and it was like 8 o'clock, I started watching a movie. And during the movie, I was hearing these creaks and cracks in the ceiling that I'd never heard before. Oh, no. Nah. There's no attic, so it was weird. My only idea was that it could be the weight of the fresh snow on the roof. After uh, the movie, I went to bed. I doubt it. I could hear the sound of the snowflakes hitting the windowsill outside. It was so peaceful. But that unsettling sound of footsteps in the snow outside returned realization that someone was outside this late at night was horrific the footsteps passed my window then faded away i was sitting on the edge of my bed for like 20 minutes waiting for any kind of sound like one of the doors being shimmied with or something mm -hmm. anything that would shift me from awareness mode to full-on defense mode it was a long while of silence Wait, before i went outside in my coat and shoes with a baseball bat and i walked around the house there was once again another fresh trail of footprints but this time, they started at the air conditioning unit, and they walked away towards the woods. I then put it together that someone was likely on my roof before, and they climbed up and down via the window AC unit. <laughs> Bro, what? I went back inside and decided to call the police. A Wakefield police officer came to the house maybe 20 minutes later. Sus. We looked outside together. He even climbed up onto the roof and told me there were indeed footprints and such on the roof that would suggest that someone had been up. That nigga playing games, boy. <laughs> bro, climb up the roof. Yeah, bro, he on, he on something. He trying to, he trying to, yeah. There. He was very nice and reassuring, telling me he wouldn't be far away if I heard them come back. Right. I also told him about the similar footprints at my neighbor's house, just as a warning in case this person or group of people is targeting multiple houses for whatever they're doing. As he left, he said he'd be in the area. The next morning I left, and I rented the place out to a group of guests a few days later. They didn't report anything out of the ordinary. Thankfully, this was only an isolated incident that happened over a year ago. Right. That's crazy. I mean, you should also, I don't know if you got a security system, you probably don't. So you should probably install a security system and stuff like that. Like, okay, not inside the house. You're going to, like, have people, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. But at least, like, a camera on the door or, like, around the house. Because, you know, you know, you had to do it on the roof and other stuff like that, you know. Dude could have broke in, did something. Could have, you know what I mean? Story two. Yeah. Install some security systems, brother. <laughs> This is something that happened when I was, of course, home alone when I was a kid. Right. I was in the seventh grade. My parents just recently started leaving me home alone. I would just play video games when they would be away. One night, my parents were out doing whatever, and I was alone, playing video games. Hold on. We had Pause. Pause real quick. Um, I ain't gonna lie. I love the snow. I love to look at it. Especially, like, you know, you ever notice when you look at snow... And it's all like, uh, how you say it, glittery and all shiny. Like snow, I ain't gonna lie. I mean, it be cold as hell. I be cold, you know what I'm saying? Like, black people like cold, you feel me? But anyways, the snow, snow is fun. 
like you build stuff out of the snow, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you just, yeah, when you look at it and see the snow just fall, it just in the air, man, it's pretty cool, man. I ain't even gonna lie. The video games in the basement so that my older brother and I could share it. And our dad didn't want the video games in the living room. Right. The basement at my parents' house is pretty big. But also, as little kids, it scared the crap out of my brother and I. That's a nice basement. When it was time to go upstairs, we'd flick the light and spring up the stairs as if demons were chasing us. What? At 12, I obviously wasn't as scared as I was as a little kid. But I would still look over my shoulder every once in a while when I was down there alone. Especially if I was home alone. I was playing whatever video game I played at the time. When bang, there was this crash at the basement window. I damn near jumped out of my seat. So I turned around to look at the window. Pretty well. It sounded like someone hit their fist on the window. It was kind of dark out <laughs> since it was cloudy and snowing outside. Right. I looked at the window and noticed there were some snow particles on the window. It looked like a piece of snow might have hit it. My initial thoughts was that it was a falling icicle hitting the window. I tried to go back to playing video games, but the icicle fury melted and there was another loud bang on the glass. I stood up this time and looked closer at the window. There were even more particles of snow in the glass now. Someone was out there throwing snowballs at the window. Mm. I knew it had to be my brother, Keith. I went upstairs into the backyard door. I opened the interior door and looked out through the glass exterior door. The brick wall to the left blocked view of the entire backyard. So I opened the door and stepped into the yard with only a pair of slides on my feet. Bruh, the slides and snow and air was blowing in my face as I stepped down the two steps to the ground level and looked beyond the brick wall. Snow. I called Keith's name and said, why didn't you tell me you're coming home tonight? I saw someone in the bushes in front of the back fence. They were clearly hiding. I said, Keith, I see you. But the more I looked, the more scared I got. That's not so Questioning him, that was actually Keith. He's not. I went back inside and locked the door. I went straight to the phone and called my mom to ask her if Keith is supposed to be home. She told me, no, he's at his friend's house for the night. Right at that moment, another snowball. I asked my mom if she heard that, and she said yes. I told her there's someone in the backyard throwing snowballs at the windows. She now put me on speaker so my dad could talk too. My dad asks if it's some kids messing around, and I said I don't know. I was just a kid, and I was freaking out. I asked, when are you guys going to be home? And they said soon, they're already on their way home. I remember my mom telling me to not let them know I'm home. But I said they already know because I went outside into the yard. Yeah. So she told me to just wait upstairs in my room with the door locked. She I was going to call the police for me. Grab a weapon. That's what I did. I went to my room and kept the lights off. It was getting darker out. But when I looked out my window, I could still see. There was someone walking around the backyard. They were looking through the downstairs windows. Plain. And I saw them knocking on the kitchen window. The one they threw the snowball at minutes ago. Now nah, you got it. They thought I was still in there because the light was left on. Whoever it was, they weren't a kid. They looked too tall. Maybe they were an older teenager or something, but I couldn't tell because or they had a jacket man. or coat on with the hood up. I kept watching, and I saw they tried lifting open the window downstairs. Oh, no. Obviously, in the dead of winter, those windows hadn't been unlocked for months. But one thing was for sure. They were trying to get into the house. Mm. We then started looking up at the upstairs windows, and that's when I ducked down. I didn't look out the window again. There was a crash at my bedroom window now. He must have seen me. Damn. He threw a few snowballs at the windows in my room. I don't know. Stop. Wait. My mom called me back to make sure. Bro, is bro trying to have a snowball fight, bro? What's going on, bro? Like, that nigga, bro, he's trolling, bro. I'm okay. And tell me that the police are on their way. It took a long time, probably because of the conditions. Bro. But the doorbell eventually rang. So I went down to confirm it was the police before letting the police officer in. Right. It was a lone female cop, probably in her 40s. She walked around the property with her flashlight as I stayed inside and watched through the windows. She checked the bushes, the shed, and the patio. When she came back front, she said there were footprints all over the yard, but that there's definitely no one out there. Not anymore, at least. My boy dipped. She spoke to my mom on the phone for a few minutes, and then she told me that she's going to wait here until my parents got home. At the right. end of the day, my parents showed up, the cop left, and I was okay. It may have just been some weirdo or some teenagers playing some messed up prank. Yeah. Though the guy trying to open the window makes me think otherwise. You the one attempt artist. to break in. It was clearly the dumbest attempt ever after alerting me with the snowballs. I think it was someone that was just... Also going outside. 
the slides and uh, thinking that was the brother was also stupid idea. Trying to scare me is to be a twisted individual. Hey, people do that. Story three. Many years ago, I went with my girlfriend Trish, my friend John, and his girlfriend Katie to the Colorado Rockies in the dead of winter. Right. John is a longtime friend of mine who I love to do outdoor activities with, like hiking, snowboarding, and mountaineering. That's what's up. John's family owns a cabin there, so we stayed there for a couple nights. We picked a weekend with snow in the forecast. When we arrived to the cabin, there was already snow on the ground, but there was more snow in the forecast for the next day. The first night we got there, we all unwinded by jumping in the hot tub and having wine. That's a nice hot tub. The cabin is very remote in the middle of the woods. There were small snow flurries falling from the sky that night while we were in the hot tub. It was a sign of what was to come tomorrow. The next day, we all woke up to see it lightly snowing outside. Lighter than the forecast had let on. Not much new snow had accumulated on the ground yet, but we still held out hope that it would continue to snow throughout the day. John fueled up the quad his family had in the big shed out back. We had to jump it with my car initially, but when it was up and running, See, like, he took turns riding it around the trails on his property. This went on for hours, as his property is massive. It right. has big openings perfect for drifting and doing donuts, and then it has tight, winding trails to ride through. Throughout this foggy day, it was snowing, but earlier in the day, it was a light snowfall. John rode around with Katie for a while while Trish and I were outside sledding down this big hill on the property. After a while of this, we all went out for lunch. I took my pickup truck there, so getting around in the snow wasn't an issue. Right. By the time we got back, the girls were ready for a nap. John and I said, screw that, and we put on our hiking gear and went into the woods, Tell finding me. one of the trails we had been riding around on the quad. This trail went way up the mountain, though, past John's property, so we began to climb. Both of us are really fit, so we're used to this kind of thing. But for the average person, hiking an uphill in the snow with heavy boots on can get very tiring. Yeah. We hiked for about half an hour to an hour up the mountain before we made... Yeah, that could, like, you know, take a lot of, you know, energy. I mean, I haven't, like, hiked before, but I have walked and gone up, like, big-ass hills with boots and snow and, like, other shit like that. It does take a lot of energy and it can get tiring. Especially if you got heavy ass boots on, you know, and the snow is like, depending on how much the snow is, you know, yeah, it can. Near to the top, where at the very least we stopped at a spot that would have been an amazing view if it weren't so foggy and snowy. Right. All we could see was white. We took a break up here, though, and sat in the snow. The snow was starting to come down a lot harder now. The forecast was right. I asked John for like the third time, are you sure you know how to get back? He said, yes, absolutely. Are you sure? Positive. So he led the way back down the mountain. It was a full-on blizzard at this point. We picked up the pace. Oh, no. Nah, Luckily, going down is a lot easier than going up. Right. At some point as we were descending, I heard this moaning, humming-type sound coming from behind us out of nowhere. Oh, no. Nah. I told John to stop and asked if he heard that. He said no. We stood still and waited. Then it happened again. Stand still and waited. Hey, man. See? I was like, hey, John. You hear that? Nope. All right, shit. We got to go anyways. It's time to go, bro. It's time to go. I'm not finna stop. I'm not finna wait. I'm not finna explore. I'm not finna just sit here and wait and just hear shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Me and him, you know what I'm saying? Do our thing. We hear some yeah, like that, bro. We got to go. Again, there was this rumbling, moaning type sound coming from not far behind us. Time to go. It didn't sound like an animal sounded human we both turned and started going quicker down the mountain after hearing it yeah i said what is that Should be better he first said time. he has no idea i started to hear footsteps from behind us i said to john to stop again and then we stopped and listened <sighs> yes we hear footsteps behind us let's just stop and let's just see what happens to us in the snow blizzard on a, up on a mountain. Like, bro, what are, you, what are you talking about? Like, you was asking to get messed up. You know how it's dead silent during a snowfall? Well, that's why it was so easy to hear footsteps from behind us. It was so foggy and the forest was so thick, however, I'm not stopping. it was near impossible to see whoever it could have been. 
Don said that was definitely not the sound of an animal. Mm. No animals would be following us, especially when we're making noise. I suddenly felt the vibrating in my coat pocket. I took out my phone and saw Trish was suddenly blowing up my phone. She must have been trying to reach me, but I didn't have service until now, and all her texts sent at once. As we continued to walk, I took off my gloves so I could answer what she was saying. But as I read her texts, I started to worry. She was asking if that's John and I outside of the cabin, and that they're scared to go out there. Huh? I replied the best I could with my wet fingers. What do you mean? It didn't deliver. I tried calling, but it went to voicemail. I lost reception again. Ooh. I told John about the text and said we have to hurry. Yeah. All the while, we kept hearing humming and moaning sounds not far behind us. We were basically running at this point, all the way down back to the cabin. We finally saw the lights of the cabin through the quickly darkening woods. We got to the cabin and knocked on the door for the girls to let us in. Once inside, the two of them started talking over to each other, trying to explain what happened. Basically, what they told us was that they saw two people walking around outside like 10 minutes ago, one of them stopping by the window and looking in. They were too scared to go over and shut the blinds until we got back, so they stayed hidden in one of the rooms. Right. John went to his dad's room to get a gun. All the blinds were closed now. The problem was we still had to go out for dinner, so John and I went outside after tensions cooled. He brought the gun with us. We looked around quick, then told the girls that it was clear to come to the car. We didn't bother telling the girls about the sounds in the woods because it would just further scare them. We went to a diner, then came right back. We skipped the hot tub tonight and instead had a movie night inside. It was interrupted by a loud and aggressive knock at the door. We all it's looked good. at one another, and I could see the fear in everyone's eyes. Mm -mm. John grabbed the gun off the table, and he came back over to us. Whoever was out there knocked again. John asked if he should threaten to shoot them. I said, no, he should just remain quiet. Nope. Nope, nope, never nope. never third set of none. Nope, nope, nope. That's where you went wrong. I was like, yep. Matter of fact, give me the gun. I'm about to say, all right, nigga. All right. I got a gun, bro. Take your own somewhere before you get shot, my nigga. Simple. Because, bro, I'm not going to play these games, bro. Like, no. You will get shot. You will get shot. It ain't no be quiet. It's, hey. Right. Hey right, boy, we're going, going about your business before you get shot. The girls went to the bedrooms while Sean and I stayed in the living room, waiting in silence for about half an hour. Half an hour? We had the gun loaded, though I know he was hoping he wouldn't have to use it. The two of us opted to sleep in the living room that night so that we would be able to hear anything. We made it through the night. The next morning, we all packed up. I helped John clean up and put everything back into the shed outside. Y'all play too much. But the really weird part was that there were no footprints at all in the snow outside the next day. What? It's possible that they were filled in by the new snow, but still, it seemed weird. Yeah. Whatever was going on there that night couldn't have been good. Hey, I would have shot the ass. Simple as that. No discussion. I'm shooting. But yeah, that was uh, three really disturbing two snowstorm stories. Uh, it was your boy Tim.